Welcome back to chapter 36. Well, look who's back, a voice said. Jack rolled over, expecting to find the remains of a destroyed pirate ship, but instead found an oak tree, a warm breeze, and a calming grass meadow. Instantly, he was on his feet, his sword out, only to find someone he hadn't ever thought he'd be happy to see. Nice to see you too, the charmed one said with a hint of a smile. Is this how you treat your friends? Who said you're a friend, Jack said, glancing all around them. Where is Leanne? She's been keeping you out somehow. We have a little time, the charmed one said. Thanks to the sea king of all people. Leanne will be back soon enough, but for now we, we, must, we can talk undisturbed. You picked a great time to leave me alone, Jack said, waving his sword around to make his point even more clear. Thanks for that. Now we're on the run from the Sea King and just crashed a pirate ship into a castle, all with just a few hours to get the, to the fairy homelands before the Wicked Queen's dragons show up and kill everyone. Oh, except the mermaid princess can't sing magic out of the water, the Wolf King has the, the piper, and May promised she'd give Bluebeard whatever he wanted at some point in the future which I'm sure is just going to end up just fine. And, the charmed one said, Jack just blinked. And what, you want more? I'm sorry, I meant to ask, where's the problem? The solutions to all those issues are inherent to the problems, are they not? Now I remember why I hated you, Jack said. It's your extremely clear answers. We don't have time to discuss your immediate problems, Jack, the knight said. There's something more pressing that needs to be addressed before Leanne returns your sword and what it's doing to you. Jack went cold. It's turning me into an eye, isn't it? The charmed one sighed. It's not that simple. The sword isn't inherently evil in any way, as I told you when I first met you. It is just a tool, nothing more. But that tool gives you access to powers beyond what you are used to dealing with, and those powers can give you opportunities. Can we maybe just skip to the end of this and get to the point? The knight stopped and then nodded. The point is this. He waved his hand and an image appeared of an older boy, maybe a year older than Jack. The image widened to reveal that the boy was dressed in the armor of an eye, covered in the same midnight blue cloak as the charmed one and Leanne. And as the image grew, Jack could see the boy standing next to a familiar looking woman. That's the wicked witch, or wicked queen, he said softly. More relevantly, the charmed one said, that is you next to her. The meadow went silent except for the wind blowing through the large oak tree. Finally, Jack cleared his throat and spoke. What? What is this? What are you showing me? A possibility? The charmed one shook his head. This is you, the way the wicked queen saw you in her magic mirror. The knight looked away. This is why she believes that you will betray May. One of these boys will betray you and the other will die, Jack said, repeating the words the wicked queen had told May three months earlier. I wanted to head this off, Jack, the knight said, letting out a deep breath. Unfortunately, your refusal to be trained and now Leanne's interference have ensured that whatever effect I might have had will be too late. He shrugged. For all I know, this was meant to be exactly what, what the way it's happening, and I've never stood a chance. That can't be, Jack said, his entire body and head numb from the idea. He would never, never betray May or join the Wicked Queen. How could this even be possible? It's not just possible. It will happen. You are heading straight for it, the Charmed One said, answering Jack's unspoken question. He glanced at the weapon in Jack's hand. You are meant to take my place in more ways than one, it seems. But why? Why tell me this, Jack shouted. I can make my own choices. I can choose not to do this. Of course, the Charmed One said. And right now you would choose just that. But at some point in the future, the near future, it seems that you will choose the opposite path. I have not seen how or why, and neither has the queen, but I can't help but think it has something to do with Leanne. Why, why her? Isn't she just an eye? There is no such thing as just an eye, the charmed one said bitterly. There's no more clever, strategic, or manipulative group in existence, each one surpassed only by their queen in terms of cunning. But Leanne, the charmed one stopped abruptly, grasped his chest, and then exploded into a cloud of smoke. As the smoke drifted away, Leanne strode up slowly, what little Jack could see of her face unreadable. Well, that was unpleasant, she said to him. I can't believe you crashed the entire ship. I'm sorry I didn't crash it into you, he said. Next time, I'll work on my aim. You'd still miss even with something that size, Leanne said, and then shrugged. 
But I get your bitterness. I heard some of what the charmer was telling you. Gonna, gonna be an eye, huh? I knew it. You know nothing. Leanne smiled. I know who you are, Jack, and right now I think that there's more that than you know. I know who I am. I know who the charmed one was. And I know something that you've been dying to know, even if you'd never admit it to another living soul. You know how much I want to tie rocks to your feet and drop you into the ocean, Jack asked. Because I'm happy to tell the world that. No, Leanne said as the meadow began to fade out. I know where your father is, Jack. And then the meadow disappeared once more. All right, I'll see you guys for the next chapter. Bye.